all of our attendees that are up on a Saturday morning. We do appreciate your time. We welcome you to Eagle House's first virtual open day. Uh, we hope to see this event grow each year and develop. Um, just some house rules for this morning. Uh, please, this is informal, so we would like you to ask your questions. At the bottom of your screen, you will see there is a chat box as well as a Q&A box whereby you can ask any question as we go through our program this morning. Um, our program, we are going to have some introduction from our principal, high school principal, Mark Ruza, our head of school, Rinaldi Moritz. And uh, we're going to look at learner support, life orientation, and all of the subjects that we offer with the wonderful teachers that will do a short presentation. Right at the end, we'll speak about the admission process and introduce you to the admission staff there. Without further ado, I'm your host, Anne Louise. I'm going to hand over to Rinaldi Moritz for introduction. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It is such a privilege to share some information about Eagle House School on this lovely spring day. And as, Lu as Anne Louise has said, we really appreciate you taking time on a Saturday morning just to visit us and learn more about our school and our teachers. Now, those of you who have visited our website and had a look at the videos that were played beforehand will know that Eagle House School is an independent private school situated in the beautiful area of Port View. Now at Eagle House School, we aim to develop well-rounded individuals academically, but also socially and emotionally. So we offer an extended or an enhanced curriculum to prepare our students for the IEB examination at the end of the grade 12 year. Our curriculum is challenging. Yes, it challenges students to think analytically, which in turn then develops their critical thinking skill. So Mr. Mark Ruza will shortly explain to you the strategies that we have implemented to identify and support the learner's individual talents and of course, um, identify them. We make use of Microsoft Teams, an online platform to teach concurrently. So if a student is ill, he or she can attend online lessons from the comfort of their own homes. And although our focus is academic excellence, we do offer extramural activities, which some of the teachers will explain in more detail to you shortly. However, if a student is serious about sports, we encourage them to join outside clubs. We also have activities such as the Valentine's picnic and spring day activities, also the Entrepreneur's Day that allow students to interact with each other to develop the interpersonal skills. So at Eagle House School, we would like to prepare students, as I said, not just academically, but also emotionally and socially so that they can enter society one day as well-balanced young men and women. I'm going to hand over to Mr. Mark Ruza now, who will explain to you our academic program. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Ma'am Rinaldi. Uh, good morning, and thank you for joining us. Uh, welcome to our parents and our prospective learners. Uh, I do believe that, you know, it's not by chance that you came across our school, and I'm sure that after your visit, uh, you will realize that we can make a difference in your child's education and especially in the future. Our school is different because we believe that every child is different. At Eagle House, we focus on differentiated teaching because that is the only way we can reach every child. This is facilitated by our small classes. Our classes have 15 children or less, which allows us to interact with your child at least one in 15 times, as opposed to one in 25. When shopping for clothes for your children, 
Do you normally go to the one size fits all department? I know your children won't be impressed. So then why do we do the same when it comes to education? When looking for a school, you must also consider whether the school will adequately prepare your child to go to university or to their chosen field of study. Getting into university is one challenge, but getting students to stay at university is another. Most of our past students and our learners that went to university stayed at university and they finished the course. So at our school, we believe in, in pulling down the university effect because sometimes it's much easier to pull up uh, the primary school effect. Our past track record uh, for Matrix speaks for itself. We have maintained an excellent pass rate since 2009, uh, and we've been one of the top performing independent schools in our district for the past 12 years. We do follow the IEB uh, curriculum, and we know that IEB is largely based on critical thinking. So critical thinking is one of the four skills needed in the 21st century skills or the fourth industrial revolution. And to meet this challenge, we use what is known as high impact, impact teaching skills. And a few of the areas are goal setting, explicit, explicit teaching, metacognitive feedback, and the two important ones, which are collaborative learning and different, uh, differentiated teaching. And I think all of this helps us to, to uh, plan the path for the children and some of the teachers will expand a little bit more on these skills as well. So there is a famous example of a simple test that's given to a goldfish, a monkey, a dog, a cat, and an elephant. And the test is basically to be successful, all they have to do is climb a tree. And I think you know what the outcome would be. So why do we subject our children to that? We need to focus on the individual and their strengths. Uh, we wish you all the best in this important task of finding a good school for your child. And thank you for your time and thank you for uh, spending this morning with us. And without further ado, I'll hand over to uh, Mandy, who is our deputy. While we are waiting for Mandy to come on the screen, thank you again for your time. Um, next up, we'll have Creative Arts and Social Sciences. Mandy, wonderful, thank you. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to spending a wonderful day, morning, with Eagle House and our staff. As mentioned, I am the Deputy Principal um, I teach technology, grade eight and nine, and I also teach life orientation, grade 10 and 12. In technology, we learn about aspects such as gears and gear ratios and how to move your vehicle and faster and speed, faster and slower, etc. We also learn about things such as levers and the mechanical advantage that that provides to the learners. We learn about electrical circuits and mining, the impact mining has had on our lives previously and continues to have. In life orientation, we look at the development of self, of um, career skills, study opportunities. Where do we go to from here, post school, and how do we cope with the challenges that are in school? Um, how do we deal with the stresses of writing a matric exam, et cetera? Many other life skills are also covered in life orientation, aiming to develop for this well-rounded um, individual with the conscious mind about themselves and of course their surroundings. One of my other responsibilities is to assess learners, to develop strategies, to, um, to learn and to overcome possible barriers to that learning. And this 
could be caused by various things like family disruptions, death in the family, um, language barriers, impact of poverty, um, disability, large classes, and, uh, and inflexible curriculum that some of our schools experience. This encompasses solutions such as learner support, accommodations, and concessions. And it ties in with the development of mega, mega cognitive skills and high impact learning. If you have any questions about these various methods of learning, please feel free to add that to the chat and we'll address them in ordinary fashion. Teaching strategies are really very important and they impact the way learners learn. Thank you for considering our school as part of your search for a, for a school for your child. And the next speaker would be Shana. Thank you, Mandy. As we wait for Shana, um, after Creative Arts and Social Sciences, we will have English and Public Speaking, Marie Carissa. Please do post up in the chat or the Q&A any questions. Thank you, Shana. Thank you, Anne-Louise. Good morning, my name is Shana Momberg and I teach... Good morning, I'm Shana Momberg and I teach Creative Arts and Social Science. Creative arts is beneficial to every learner as it not only helps the learners think in a creative way, but it also improves mood, boosts the learner's self-esteem, improves their cognitive function, improves their social life and social connections, as well as assists with alleviating stress and anxiety. Creative arts is divided into two components, namely visual arts and drama. Visual arts is important to promote critical thinking, positive impact learner behavior, creativity, and overall performance. Our curriculum includes painting of portraits, using clay to make pinch pots, as well as using recyclable material to create fashion and functional containers. Drama enhances verbal and non-verbal expression of ideas. It improves voice projection, articulation of words, fluency with language, and persuasive speech. Listening and observation skills develop by playing drama games, being an audience, rehearsing, and performing. Learners are able to write their own scripts, as well as have an opportunity to perform them in front of the class, make their own uh, puppet shows, learn about South African poetry, praise poetry, as well as have the opportunity to write their own poems. Now, social science. The aim of social science is to help learners acquire the knowledge of their environment, create an understanding of human relationships, attitude and values by providing relevant information, knowledge and skills. The study of social science prepares students to grow up as active, responsible and reflective members of society. Social science consists of two components, namely geography and history. In geography, learners acquire the ability to interpret the distribution and processes of physical and human phenomena and understand the dynamic interrelationship between physical and human world. Our curriculum includes map work, settlements, developments, climate regions, as well as resource use and sustainability, just to name a few. Teaching history to learners gives a broad perspective, generalized understanding about how the present comes about as the understanding of the process of historical change. We teach learners about World War I and World War II, turning points in South African history from 1948 to 1994, the mineral, mineral revolution in South Africa, and the industrial revolution in Britain and South Africa. As we prepare our learners for critical thinking, together with our high impact teaching strategy approach, our goal is to strive for great success. Thank you, Anne Louise. Thank you very much, Shana. And um, next we have uh, English and public speaking Marika Rousseau. As we wait for her to come on next, after that we'll have Afrikaans as a um, FIL and Rieda Bronwyn Green. 
I have posted up our schedule of or our subject choices for next year. And I'm also going to add that in the chat or brochure to view. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Marika Rousseau, and I am the English educator at Eagle House. Um, to start off with, my greatest talent would be talking, which is a very necessary skill to teach, especially English. So that is why I'm in charge of our public speaking, which is one of our extramural activities for those of us who do not enjoy running around on a field or possibly drowning in a swimming pool. So what I would like to teach you is how you can address not only the public, but um, how you communicate with an individual, how you go about writing an argumentative essay and putting that into a speech format, how you get your points across, how you ensure that you are heard and that you are understood and we do this both internally and of, as of next year, we will be also participating in external public speaking. Then it is English, uh, which I teach from grade eight to grade 12. Our focus in English is always going to be my personal favorite literature, which comprises of a novel, um, short stories, folk tales, drama, which is also a very important um, aspect in literature, even though it is not necessarily the most loved one. But I'm quite sure when we work on acting it out and we're jumping up on our desks that you might just find it useful and maybe even fun to participate. The best part of literature is poetry, my personal absolute love. And I will teach you how beautiful one can paint a picture if you use the correct words. Creative writing is also an important part. And although we do not spend too much time writing anymore, we definitely do spend a lot of time typing. And it is here where you need to learn how to represent yourself on a piece of paper. We also look at language. This is the most disliked part, I'm quite sure. I'm very, very well aware that parts of speech is quite annoying, but you will see that we can make that fun, make it part of our fundamentals and hopefully get it out of the way as soon as possible. <laughs> the most important thing is that you are given the opportunity to learn to think, to acquire a skill not only to comprehend, but also to manipulate the number one language used around the world, both socially and within the business environment. You will one day become a product. And it is, at the end of the day, your ability to speak that will sell you to the world. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, that, Marika. I can hear there's a lot of passion. Uh, next up, we've got Bronwyn. Um, she's going to present the Afrikaans and the Riedenage. And then after Bronwyn, we'll have EMS Accounting Economics with Freeman. Good morning. Um, I'm Bronwyn Green and I am an educator at Eagle House. I teach Afrikaans and I also um, present or I direct the Riedenage. So uh, um, in today's you know, modern world, I often get asked by learners, but ma'am, why do we have to learn you know, an additional language? Now, um, the cognitive benefits of bilingualism can begin from experiences very, very early in childhood and can persist throughout life. Um, I think in many households, you know, it is common that we hear more than one language. Now, one of the main advantages involves what is loosely, loosely referred to as executive function. Now, this describes skills that allow you to control, direct and manage your attention, as well as your ability to plan. It also helps you to ignore irrelevant information and focus on what is important. 
because a bilingual person has a mastery of two languages and the languages are activated automatically and subconsciously. The person is constantly managing the interference of the language so that he or she doesn't say the wrong word in the wrong language at the wrong time. Now for public, oh, for Riede Nosh, um, we have presented this internally this year and from next year on we will be competing um, in external Riede Nosh competitions. Um, the truth is also that in today's increasingly interconnected and interdependent world, um, other language proficiency is a vital skill that gives you the um, lead on any opponent. Um, what we also look at, the same as in English, is we do um, literature, so poesy, prosa, kort verhaalle, and then ook um, literare studies. Um, language skills can be a significant competitive advantage that sets you apart from your monolingual peers. They are amongst the top eight skills required for all occupations, no matter your sector or skill. And the demand for bilingual professionals is rising exponentially. Um, I really look forward to meeting um, new learners um, and actually um, continuing and bettering the subject at our school. Thank you so much, Bronwyn, for that. Um, next up, we've got uh, Mr. Freeman with EMS Accounting and Economics. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning. Um, my name is Mr. Freeman. Um, I teach EMS accounting and economics. Um, we, 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 we normally hear of subjects that are more practical. Subjects uh, uh, in the past were subject to be subjects such as, such as uh, agriculture, subjects such as woodwork. But increasingly, every subject is becoming a practical subject. And I think one of the things that we are realizing in life is, um, it is very important whatever you do, whatever you end up doing it. I think this is one of the things that uh, the designers of curriculum yeah, have noticed that life in itself is actually uh, a practice in sales. It is actually a practice in monetizing our activities. And, and for that reason, it is very important uh, for every student uh, within their curriculum, whether they are going to end up choosing to, to do uh, sciences, whether they are going to end up doing, focusing on IT, it is very important that at a level, at, at some level throughout their curriculum, they develop the skill of monetizing activities. And after developing this skill, also the skill to be able to sell, because it doesn't matter how brilliant you become, if you don't learn to create value, attach value to your product, and then after that, being able to find a customer for it, uh, life would not change. Also, it's very important to notice that even the most brilliant inventions in life, if they are not marketed, if they don't reach the people who require them because of a lack of selling and marketing skill, then it becomes almost pointless. And one of the things that is happening in, in our society currently is the generation of our students, the generation of, of, of the teenagers, they don't spend as much time watching news. And, and, and one of the reasons is because do they actually understand? But if, if our classes, particularly our EMS classes, because uh, everyone, um, at least before they choose their, their particular specialization in grade 10, we have gone through some some level of EMS or economics or business or accounting, at least if, if that understanding was connected because the issue has always been, if, if the content is there, do we transmute this content into skills? Do we show the relationship between, uh, between what is shown, like for instance, on JSE and what you learn in class? If, if we, we always show our students, which is what we always try to do in class, to connect, what is happening in the textbook to what is happening on news. And then you start seeing the relationship. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm very glad to say that uh, some of the students that are on, on, on this stream will be joining us and they will be actually learning to connect the relationship between your general accounting in the textbook and, and what people at work do, for instance, um, in, in, in bookkeeping, 
what other people actually consider careers is things that uh, for, for many students that are in EMS, for instance, they do uh, only in, in grade nine. So showing that relationship that this is not mere content, but there's actual life skill that people can actually do on a daily basis. I think to, to just end also, we uh, I'm, I'm responsible for facilitating an extra curricular activity, which is chess. Uh, particularly for me, what is extremely important, especially for the nature of the students that we're getting, uh, is that they will be able to develop uh, ability to focus, ability to get into flow state. Because of the nature of activities, because of nature of life that we live now, it's very difficult to grow a muscle, to go into flow state, to be able to focus for a long period of time. So uh, when you play chess, because you are required to focus to, to win, then you develop that uh, focus muscle. And uh, thank you everyone who has joined us this morning and hoping to see you at IGWA. Thank you so much, uh, Freeman. Um, next, we have uh, business studies with Bonnie Brookstein. Um, uh, while she is um, coming on the screen, um, after that, mathematics and robotics uh, with Mr. Sydney. And then um, please do post up your questions as we move along through the subjects. And at the end, we'll also have a general Q&A for any questions. Good morning all, uh, I'm Bonnie, I teach business studies. Business studies is an extension of EMS from uh, the senior phase. Uh, it's a very vast subject on uh, how to run your business from the time the business is uh, thought of until um, the admin section of the business. So uh, learners will learn uh, how the, there are eight functions in a business. So it starts with uh, purchasing. Um, so from when you buy the, how to buy your products, how to buy your raw materials, where do we buy it, uh, how to produce it, different methods of production, how to advertise your product, how to attract your, your customers, uh, financing your business, uh, human resources in a business. So those are the people that work in our, in our business. Uh, we have different uh, forms of business from small to large. We learn all those things in business studies. We learn the laws. We learn how to do the administration of our businesses. Um, what, um, then uh, the business consists of three environments. The micro environment, which is a small environment that's inside the business. We learn everything that happens inside of our business. We learn about what happens just outside of our business. That is the market environment. The market environment, uh, our customers, our suppliers, um, the, uh, the people, the, in, the, the uh, people outside our business that are there to support us, to look after our business, to give our business a good image. And then we have the macro environment, that is the government. So we learn about the government, the government makes laws, how those laws affect our, in, uh, our businesses. Um, very interesting. In matric, uh, half of the syllabus consists of all the laws that we learn within uh, that affect our businesses, such as labor laws, such as uh, how we pay tax, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, then um, also we learn about the, the environment, uh, how, our, how we can be good to our environment, how we need to look after our resources, how we need to look after the water, how we look, have to look after our trees, um, how we don't pollute if we have a business, uh, we're not unethical about how we run our business, how crime affects our business. And in today in South Africa, uh, the news is so, uh, we have so many things, so many factors that affect our business. So it's very interesting because what happens uh, in everyday life, we are able to apply that when we write exams. Um, what careers do we follow when we, uh, when with business studies, uh, we can do uh, anything in a business. First of all, you can become your own business owner. You learn entrepreneurship, 
which started with EMS. Um, so all the things that you needed to actually start your own business, to uh, draw up a business plan, uh, which type of business, how to recruit your staff, all those things are learned in business studies. So it doesn't matter whether you're going to become a plumber, whether you become a, a CEO one day of a big corporation, uh, your business studies is going to help you. Um, so is, uh, is it a difficult subject? Uh, it's a subject, it's a hands-on subject. It's a subject we can relate to because it, 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 uh, we look at current events that happen on the news. For example, Corona has affected businesses immensely. So in a few years time, they're going to add Corona to our syllabus. Uh, we learn about HIV AIDS. HIV AIDS has, has, a, has had an impact on businesses, on, um, on society. We learn about social economic issues, crime, poverty, unemployment, how those things affect business. We learn about corporate social investment, uh, how that boost the image of a business, how businesses need to help uh, the society in which they operate. Uh, so yes, uh, it's got a lot of work, it's a lot of writing, it's a lot of content, um, but we can relate to a lot of it. Um, it includes a lot, of, uh, it includes essay writing in the exams, we have to write essays. Uh, it's a study subject, so it's something you have to study constantly read through your work, know what's going on in society. Um, and uh, it can be a very interesting subject. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, um, Bonnie, for that. Um, then next up, we've got mathematics and robotics. Um, Sydney, if you can just introduce yourself first, and then I will um, show your presentation. After Sydney, we're going to have geography and tourism. Um, and then we've got two or three more subjects and we'll move on to the admission. But please do, do not be shy, post up any questions in the Q&A and the chat box. Thank you. Good morning, parents. Uh, good morning, uh, stakeholders. Uh, I'm Sydney Murandiri. I teach mathematics from grade eight to grade 12. The hardest part of my job is to make mathematics practical, relevant, and enjoyable. To meet this goal, our learners engage in both practical and field work. In the next three minutes, I am going to take you through the Eagle House way of doing mathematics. Thank you. Let me just see if I have control of this. I'll, I'll um, you can just say next slide and I'll go on. Okay. Here yeah. we go. Next. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to take you uh, basically through our, our philosophy of teaching maths and learning maths and doing maths. We use a hands on learner centered approach. Uh, to me, mathematics is a thing of beauty. And this is what we spread to our learners and also to you parents. Anyone who has taken time to observe kids playing or being serious must have noticed the following. Children from a tender age are constantly inquiring, asking questions that they eventually seek to answer by moving, sorting, organizing, counting and structuring things. And in the process of doing so, uh, in the process of doing this work, that's fundamentally mathematical work. When kids are doing their important work of mathematics, what we see are individuals and groups of children playing. Doing mathematics is very much a natural human instinct. We don't need to teach uh, kids mathematical skills. We simply have to nurture, to nurture the skills because kids come to our classes already possessing the basic skills. Um, my word to you parents is, if your kids break anything in the house, 
they're simply flexing their mathematical muscles. Don't uh, shout at them. Next slide. To facilitate hands-on learning, learners do a, a few of, um, quite a lot of, uh, uh, of things. A few of them are listed below. Our learners program using Python to test variables, to build mathematical models, to develop application software so that they can apply and demonstrate acquired knowledge and skills. In addition to building their code and their variables and their mathematical models using programming, learners also do robotics. Now, robotics uh, bridges reality and uh, what exists in a computer is code. So when our learners do physical computing through robotics, they get to control real tangible things. And more, most importantly, our learners also do authentic projects to parallel the work of field mathematicians such as architects, engineers, accountants, um, insurance guys, and also actuarial scientists, just to, make, to name a few. Next slide. When we teach in class, we always start with questions. This is what we call inquiry-based learning. We believe strongly that real thinking takes place when learning is driven by questions. And most importantly, it takes time. Thinking only happens when learners have time for productive struggle. We don't rush children through their work because doing so robs them of an opportunity to grapple with content and learn. A good example is the code that you see on the right at the right of the slide. That code takes almost a day to develop. And then after developing that code, you still have to go to the physical part where it controls a robot that you have built from scratch. So our classes are designed in such a way that our learners spend more time, a lot of time on mathematics and doing mathematics. And as a teacher, I am not the answer key. When kids come to me expecting answers, my, 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 my response is always go look for the answer. By refusing to be the answer key, we create space for this kind of mathematical conversation and debate. And this draws every learner, every child in. And when learners come with their answers, we accept wrong answers. And we encourage learners, we encourage the whole group to explore the consequences. All the inventions that we see today are a result of people who were exploring the consequences of wrong beliefs and wrong answers. Parents, I look forward to seeing your kids, to playing with your kids, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. I can hear there's a lot of passion in mathematics. Um, next up, we've got geography and tourism. With uh, Jacob Omar, if, as soon as he comes on. Um, after that, we'll have uh, Kat with Standy. Thank you. Good morning, uh, parents. I teach geography and tourism to the FET phase. That means grade 10 to 12. In geography, we study climate, geomorphology, population, settlement, map work, and GIS. Alana, having studied geography, can follow many career paths. To name a few, geology, town planning, informatics, environmental studies, etc. Geography is one of those subjects that doubles as a science and humanity subject. And just thinking of getting your child into university 
it can contribute greatly to the end scores. Geography has moved on from the notion of being a so-called study subject. In the last eight or so years, it has become much more uh, application driven. The other subject that I teach is tourism. Tourism, in tourism, your learner learns everything about tourism. From tourism documentation to tourism budget. Although it's a practical subject, uh, the learner uses the information of that year to complete the practical component of the subject. Tourism has become very important. Before COVID, tourism was the fastest growing sector in the economy. Therefore, much resources is spent on the subject where children have to go in global reservation and distribution systems in order to learn how to advise when they go out into the field. That is what I do in a nutshell. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Jacob Omar. Uh, next up with uh, Kat Stanley uh, Chirua, that will be discussing his subject. After that, uh, we've got life sciences and the botanical garden excursions with Marie Kruger, that I think will be interesting to hear about. As we wait for the, the next teacher, please post a few questions in the Q&A or the chat box. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Stanley Chirwa. I teach computer applications technology. At CAT is the study of the components of a computer system and how to use it to solve everyday problems. And it prepares one for the life in the technological world. It is a very practical skill-based subject which helps you at universities, college, and at the workplaces. The computer applications technology aims at developing computer skills in the following packages, Word, Excel, Access, Outlook, PowerPoint, basic HTML, which is web, web design. Learners will be able to use the internet and understand the role it plays uh, find, in, uh, find relevant information, process it, make decisions. And it also, the great, the great advantage of this subject is that it provides skills that can be applied immediately in the classroom and the workplace. Computer application technology helps learners acquire computer skills that improve their performance when they enter tertiary institutions. The computer application technology also equips learners with knowledge, skills, values, attitudes to create, design, and communicate information in different formats. It also makes it possible for learners to collect, analyze, and edit data, and to manipulate, process, present, and communicate information to different sectors of society. With such focus in education now being aligned with 21st century learning, uh, computer application technology it equips learners with 21st century skills, which are one, collaboration and teamwork, sharing, sharing responsibility, working together and finding solutions together enhances the development of critical thinking skills. Computer applications technology uh, work hand in hand with uh, cloud computing, educating the learners about collaborating online with others to work towards a common goal using the internet as a medium of communication. To creative and imagination. Working with the various digital applications gives the learners many opportunities to put their problem solving skills to work by being creative in how they work with the data and come up with solutions. Uh, three, critical thinking. 
One is the ability to logically assess context and apply sequential problem solving skills. This also means knowing how to analyze a problem and to choose the best solution. The last, maybe finally, problem solving. Many of today's jobs require workers to think outside the box and problem solving uh, and problem solve from different angles, always being ready to construct and defend a new way of thinking. With many applications and practical case studies done in computer applications technologies, learners are exposed to multiple methods of problem solving using a variety of tools and outcomes. And that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much um, for that presentation. Next up, Life Sciences and Botanical Garden Excursions, Marie Kruger. Good morning all. My name is Mrs. Marie Kruger. I teach the life sciences at Eagle House. Uh, it is, uh, life science is a very content heavy subject, but very interesting as we're looking at the world around us. Uh, some topics that we do cover is life on earth and how it has changed, living systems in plants and animals and the interaction of organisms with each other and the environment. We don't just cover content and theory and life sciences. We also do practicals in our fully equipped laboratory so that students can observe cells for plants and animals under the microscope. And we do tests such as food tests, see how much sugars there are, for example, in foods. Another part of life sciences is that we like to include excursions. As um, Mrs. Moyer mentioned, that we visited the Walter Susulu Botanical Gardens earlier this year. The students were divided into groups that could then look at the plants around us and apply the knowledge that we learned earlier this year. I must say it was a lot of fun and a great learning opportunity. I just want to touch on a few uh, career examples. If you are looking to study life sciences, you could become a physiologist, a biochemist, a medical rep, lab assistant, or a teacher like me. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you, Mrs. Kruger. Um, next up, we've got natural science, physical science and practicals uh, from Dennis Mukotsa. Um, after that, we're gonna end off with general questions and answers and a word from the admissions office. Thank you for your patience. Hey, good morning, uh, parents. Uh, thank you for your time. I'm here to share with you what we do in the sciences department, uh, that is natural sciences and uh, physical sciences. Uh, science is basically in the business of uh, providing explanations to observations. That is our business of science. And uh, our space is an academic space. If a child is at school, it's basically to stimulate the observations as well as give them an opportunity to be providing explanations to the observations that would have been made during an activity in class. Now, what are those activities that we have in class that will provide the child with an opportunity to observe? We do have experiments, which may come as demonstrations, which may also come as uh, simulations, which may also come as part of projects. Now, these activities, some are short, term and there's a long term like the projects. But when you do have things like demos and when you have uh, other investigations that you do in class, like basically checking on the reactions of uh, different elements in the periodic table uh, with chemicals like acids. Why am I highlighting those ones? We do have um, experiences, all of us with uh, things like uh, jewelry. And we notice most of the uh, jewelry is actually from certain elements or from certain substances. For example, we've got gold, talk of diamonds. There's a reason why we do have those. And it is uh, the science environment that then sharpens the explanations around why those things are common experiences in our everyday lives. I've just given that one. And then another experience that we all come across is we are approaching a mall and then you find the glass door opens. 
That is science at play. How do you provide an explanation to that? So it does open us to all the experiences that we have in our lives, which we call authentic experiences. And this classroom is going to provide the child with an opportunity to explain it in a science scientific manner. What is the scientific manner? You don't just present a claim which cannot be supported by evidence. So the evidence has to be actually in agreement with what is already recognized science. There are laws, there are principles, there are theories. Those are things that one has to be actually sharing or articulating for them to actually have a presentation or an explanation that is acceptable. We don't engage explanations based on feelings. We engage explanations based on what we have observed and what agrees with observations. It's a practical subject. And then going on to what we have in terms of the progress that we have seen in engineering, the progress that we have seen in health sciences, the progress that we have seen even in food sciences, those are all things that have come about because we have had people that have invested their time studying. The studies come about as a result of having made an observation. Then you then come into a space where you say, how then do I pursue this so that I actually come up with a product, a product that will live, that is going to make life convenient, a product that is going to actually bring advancement in the life here on earth. We have this opportunity and uh, we have those that have actually done well, the great scientists that we are reading in our books. And as a science student, one is actually given the same opportunity to come up with information that will then become science. Well, science is a product of human effort and that cannot be achieved as an individual. It has to be done as a team. Thank you for that. Thank you, parents. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for that presentation. Lizanne, if you can, it's always good to just put a face um, to the person that you are speaking with over the phone. Just a very, very short uh, explanation of the admission process. And then if I may ask Ma'am Rinaldi Moritz and Mr. Mark Ruza just to end off our session. Thank you so much. Hi, thank you. I am Luzon and I'm at the admissions officer for Eagle House. Um, I'm going to explain the process for the admissions. Um, so what I will need from you is uh, your application forms. If you go on our website, you will go to applications and there's a form you can fill in. Once you have pressed submit, I will also need uh, your latest school report. I will need a character reference from the school. I will need a birth certificate, parents' ID, and consent to release student information, as well as the application fee of 750 rands, the proof of payment. Once I've received everything, I will send you a link to book a date for an assessment. The assessment is not something to worry about. It's not a knowledge-based test. It's computerized, it's multiple choice, and it's a cognitive abilities test. Like Mr. Ruza said, all students are different. So it will just see how the student thinks. Um, and it's not, not something that you can prepare for. So yes, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Rinaldi Moritz and Mark Ruza, if you would like to end off the session for us, thank you so much. Hello again. Yes, first of all, I would just like to thank all our teachers as well, taking out time and uh, presenting their subjects to you. As Anne has also said, there's some passionate teachers out there. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And then also to Anne Louise, our host. As you know, uh, Eagle House School is managed by Alma Mater. We are quite a few sister schools in our group and she has to go through this whole process with all of that with all of those schools. So thank you very much, Anne Louise. And yes, I just 
I'm excited to see all of your faces next year. Um, contact Luzon, have a look at the chat box. I see that Anne has posted the link there to the subject choices as well as the brochure for Eagle House School. If you have not yet had a look at that, please click on the link. And then um, if there's any other information, of course, you can contact us at admissions at eaglehouse.co.za where Luzon will be ready to assist you. Thank you, everybody. Have a lovely day. Over to you, Mark. Uh, thank you, Ronaldi. And I'd just like to echo what Ronaldi has said. Thank you to our teachers. Uh, thank you, parents, for training us. And I think it is clear, you can see the passion coming out uh, in our teachers. So, you know, we're really blessed and honored to have them. I think what also comes through greatly is the focus on the child. So we talk about the high impact teaching strategies. And I think the underlying factor in all of that is, uh, you know, if we focus just on the metacognitive uh, aspect of it, and that's basically teaching children to focus on their learning and to understand the learning process. And without that, I don't think we'll, we'll achieve much. Uh, so we do look forward to meeting with you. And if you have any questions, uh, Please go through Luzon and Luzon and I chat often. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Anne Louise. Thank you very much to prospective parents. Um, we hope to see you soon. Enjoy all, the rest of your, your weekend.